All right, guys. So to, for those of you who don't know me, my name is JJ Jones. I'm the area ag economist for the Oklahoma uh, OSU Cooperative Extension Service. I cover about the south central part of Oklahoma, and also I'm kind of seen as one of the, the uh, people that helps with what we call the Oklahoma Meat Goat Education Team. Uh, I do a lot of work uh, on goat marketing and goat markets also too, and so. I thought, you know, we we we're doing several meetings on, you know, the effects of COVID-19 on different parts of the ag world, and I thought, why not do one for uh, meat goats? And and I'm gonna talk a little bit of, about sheep as well uh, as we go along. But before we kind of get started, and, and what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna do this little poll here. I just want to see. Uh, Y'all should be able to see this, and you can just answer this question for me on the computer. You know, how concerned are you about the effects of COVID-19 pandemic on the goat industry and your goat operation? You know, either not concerned, little concerned, somewhat concerned, fairly concerned, or greatly concerned. Hopefully, y'all can uh, make a choice on your computer. Nobody's voting yet, so maybe not. Well. Trent, is my polling showing up out there? Showed up on mine. Okay. Maybe nobody just wants to ask the question. So it, it, it's a tough deal. I mean, it's, it's one of these things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just end this. Oop. Hey, Judge, I, it won't let us hit submit. Uh, okay, won't let you hit submit. All right. Probably some little button I forgot to hit. Uh, we'll just go on. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, this, this COVID-19 situation, if you'd asked me, uh, if you'd asked me two weeks ago, my answer would have been a little different about my level of concern uh, for, uh, for, you know, the goat industry or any, or any really industry. And then the more and more we get into this, my level of concern goes up a little more uh, every day. I'm, I'm trying to remain uh, po uh, optimistic about this. Uh, I was telling somebody, I've got three trips planned in May, June, and July. And I'm not sure if we're going to get to go on any of them, but so, but the other one thing I want to tell y'all is the answer of what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to use a movie quote. It's like trying to hit a bullet with a, uh, with a smaller bullet while you're riding a horse. Uh, it's, it, it, we, we seem to think we, we got a, a handle or an idea of what's going on. And the next day something happens and it kind of changes it just a little bit. So with that, I'm going to go on. And share, and I got a little presentation here. Let me get this to work. And so I hope, uh, Trent, can we see all that? See my presentation on the screen? I hope everybody can see it. Okay, again, you can, you got questions, you can either unmute your microphone or something other. Uh, we're going to talk about this just a little bit. Yes, it looks good. All right, here we go. How we're going to do and how we're going to talk about this, uh, I got kind of just a little a little bullet list here. Uh, well, first, we're going to talk about a little bit about COVID-19 effects. Uh, then we're going to go in the, geek, uh, the goat markets uh, to some degree. And we're going to talk a little bit about sheep. Uh, uh, and, and we'll break it down, the difference a little bit between hair sheep and wool sheep. Uh, we'll finish up talking about gov possible government programs and some stimulus packages that are going to come along that will help you in the, in the future. At least we hope they're going to help you. So let's kind of go on. We'll get started here. Uh, as you know, the COVID-19, the big thing, and I think that affects us more than than what we really and you think about is just the economy and the downturn it's taken. Uh, not only, you know, the stock market gone down, uh, but this, the shelter at home rules that we're dealing with. What it do, has done and the big the big effects on the ones at least on, on ag and especially the protein sector like sheep and goats, is restaurants have seen a decrease of over 70%. I don't know what the new numbers are. Uh, they change on a daily basis, but right now they're seeing a decrease of 70% uh, business. So all those, uh, um, all that meat that was going into the restaurants now has to go somewhere else. Uh, and right now it was estimated, I was on a webinar yesterday, it's estimated that 50% of the spending in the U.S. gets spent on eating out, 50% on groceries. So that 50% is not being spent in the in the in the restaurant sector. In the grocery stores, though, on the other hand, they've seen an increase of 70%. That's why you see a lot of these. You go in the grocery stores, 
you see sh empty shelves and not just, you know, toilet paper and stuff like that. I, I walked down the grocery store Saturday and ramen noodles was gone. Uh, and I ate enough ramen noodles in, in college that I don't know that I ever want to eat anymore. But for somebody just to be, put, you know, clean out the shelves. And then, you know, uh, there was some meat left in the counter, uh, but, you know, it was kind of sparingly, you know, hamburger was tough and fine uh, and different things. So, and all this has caught the grocery stores completely off guard. They were not ready for it. And what you got to remember, and I worked in the grocery store business for nine years going through school, grocery stores order their, order their stuff months ahead of time. So that meat that we're seeing in the counter today was ordered two months ago, 60 days. And so for them, for their business to go up 70% completely caught them off guard and they can't just call the, the, the supplier and say, okay, we need to double and triple that order. That's just not, you know, it doesn't really work that way. So it's caught them off guard. It's going to take some time for them to catch up with the rest of, of what's going on. And then the other big thing, unemployment highest has been uh, this morning, they said since the great depression, I think the numbers that got released today were higher than actually some of the numbers in the Great Depression. And what that basically means is going to be less disposable income. With people not having jobs, that's going to affect the amount of money that they're going to be able to spend. And and that affects the goat industry, it affects the sheep industry, it affects it all. And, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So let's go into the goat side of it. The one bright point uh, optimistic point, you know, for those of you, you know, and, and it depends on what part of the country you are, but here, even in Oklahoma, where we raise a bunch of goats, goat meat is very seldom seen in restaurants. So that 70% reduction really doesn't hurt goat meat. Uh, but, and most of the goat meat is consumed in the homes. And so actually, you know, people wanting to buy more, you know, from grocery stores probably helps out uh, to some degree, helps out with our demand, doesn't hurt us as bad as, as, as what the sheep, when I get to talking about sheep here in a little bit, of what it's hurt them. The other good news is goat supply chain may be, and I put may, uh, the reason why we put may is we're not, you know, this is this has never happened before, uh, so we're not 100% sure, but it, it there there is a, a thought out there, a theory out there, that the supply chain may be a little more resistant to the outside influences. So, Goat processors are generally small operations, so it's not like the big beef packing, you know, uh, places where they kill thousands of head at a time. Goat processors are generally small, so one shutting down because of you know, maybe a, a COVID-19 outbreak in that plant doesn't affect it as great as when, like the plant in Pennsylvania that's now shutting down for uh, uh, killing, killing cows. And so we may be a little more resistant to that. Some concerning parts is the recession. It, you know, when recession hits, you know, that means less money, less disposable income. And guys, you know, you do some math on the goats that we're selling today. Goat meat is not a cheap option. It, it, it's really expensive. I mean, it's up there high, as high or if not higher than, than ribeye steaks and stuff like that. So as people have less money to spend, are they going to substitute? Now, I know a lot of these ethnic groups don't want to substitute. Uh, you know, beef, and they won't substitute pork, but, you know, you know, it's going to be concerning. It could have some effect. Now, another good bright point in the goat side of this, holiday schedules coming up, and and I'm going to show you what the schedule looks like. That should kind of help us, boot, you know, keep demand up because these ethnic groups that kind of want that uh, goat meat during those holidays. So, uh, again, if you got questions or something other, just let me know. Uh, this next slide, and if you've seen my presentations in the past, you've seen, or even the one on YouTube I put up about a month ago, uh, you, you you've seen this chart before. But the the uh, oh, the red line is the five-year average, and the black line 2018, and the green line uh, 2019, and the purple line is 2020. And I'm kind of glad that I waited. I thought about doing this presentation or this uh, session a week earlier, but I decided to wait a week, um, different things. And I'm glad I did because the message would have been a little more different because the prices hadn't fallen off a week ago, okay? And even this graph right here is a little deceptive because you can see in 2020, and I, I'm using San Angelo prices. If you're not 
close to Texas or, you know, or your, your price is a little different. You may not be receiving the same prices, but the, the market should be reacting the same way. You should have probably seen higher prices than what you're, you know, what we've seen in the last couple of years. You know, in San Angelo, they averaged in January almost $3.30 a pound. $3 a pound. Uh, that's pretty good money. And then we've seen just kind of a steady decline that just kind of shows a slow decline uh, d down since then. Uh, but what it doesn't show is the kind of the effects of, of, of what's going on today in COVID market. Like I said, two weeks ago, a week ago, or, you know, we were talking about it here in my office that prices for sheep and goats hadn't really fallen that much. Uh, that, you know, and where at the same time, if I was to put a graph up here of cattle prices, you'd seen a, just a huge drop off in, in, in uh, cash prices and, and cattle guys just singing the blues about trying to sell cattle. But, but when you go to this next graph, and I did this one today, you can see this graph right here. This shows just the 2020 prices on a week to week basis. The average price for that week for that uh, 40 to 60 pound goat and 60 to 80 pound goat. And you kind of see here that, you know, they kind of bounce up around and up and down, uh, but they really didn't see no effects. And, and the little black line that you see here, that is, I, I kind of put the, that as the, the indicator uh, when the COVID-19 really kind of got serious. I mean, I know it's been talked about during the month of February, but here in Oklahoma, it really, we kind of put the start date is when they shut down the Utah Jazz OKC Thunder game. Uh, if you all know that, that, that night uh, is when one of the players from Utah tested positive for COVID-19, and that's when the NBA season was shut down. And so, and that's when things here in Oklahoma started to shut down. And, but you can kind of see it still was, three weeks before we uh, actually had any really lowering of prices. I mean, we see a little smaller price decrease of, you know, one or two cents per pound, but not a big decrease. Then you see last week from week, and, and it's a little deceiving because actually in the week, third week in March, they didn't record any prices in San Angelo. But, you know, the prices wasn't down that great deal that third week, but you look from week three to week four, that's a huge, uh, a huge decline uh, in that price, and oops, back up, and and you can see I'm trying to get where I can see the graph a little bit. You know that we went from 320 a pound on the on the 40 weight goats, 50 pound weight goats to under 280. Now, I'm not saying you know that's still good money, guys. I mean, you put that kind of dollar figure in any budget you have, you still should be able to make a a, a decent uh, return to your uh, bottom line. But that's a really sharp decline, and you know, personally, I'm glad I actually sold the first week in March my kids that I had, and my lamb, some of my lamb kids, uh, lamb uh, that first week in March, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I didn't hold them another week, uh, so or, or a week or two. So you can kind of see here the it, the COVID is having an effect. Uh, the prices now, uh, I'm not sure. You know, I would don't. Let's see, it says I got a chat here. Oh yeah. Um, I'm not sure, you know, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's effect on goat demand. Some of these prices may be just an effect of, of the rest of the markets. You know, when you start looking at their other markets, it may just be a pull down effect from those as well. So, uh, but again, prices are not bad and they're still, and still, you know, you back up to this, uh, oops, back up, you back up to here, we're still, you know, right at, uh, we're still above the five-year average, uh, just a little below 2019. So uh, prices. So I mean, we're still we're still uh, some pretty good money. Uh, and but now you look at this, and we're going to talk about seasonality here in a minute. Uh, how low can the prices go? So uh, let me get to this holiday schedule. Uh, for those of you you know, know uh, I'm not a real big fan of basing on my marketing scheme on on holidays. Uh, this holiday schedule because it moves. I mean, it's based on the lunar calendar. And so if you're going to base your marketing plan on this, that means you have to move your mark, your dates, breeding dates and everything else, uh, you know, back every time. But this time around, it's, it's a good thing that this, these kind of move, you'll look here at the beginning of Ramadan begins here towards the end of April and we'll go through, you know, a little bit of May and then the festival fast breaking. Uh, and, the, and then you see that in May and then the, uh, festival sacrifice later on. So we have some uh, holidays that are going to help prop up demand uh, because these folks, that's what, no matter what the cost is, 
Uh, they may not buy as much maybe, but they're still going to buy that goat meat. So that's some good news. That should help us out just a little bit uh, with that. But when you look at this seasonality chart and, and guys, when you, uh, you know, you've seen this before, you know, we're, we're used to seeing a, a decline in prices from about now, April into our summer months. And so we're going to see that seasonality price uh, 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 drop prices from where they are at to now to, to wherever their seasonal low is going to be. Now, how low is it going to be? You know, last year's low was like at 230, 240 a pound, or maybe 220 a pound. Uh, we might actually see prices go lower than that, maybe drop below $2 a pound. And so I show you all this just to say, you know, if you've got goats kind of going to be ready here in the next 30 days, I don't know that I'd be afraid to take those goats to market now instead of trying to hold them and, tr and, and, and hold them. And if, if everybody holds these goats waiting for prices to get better, and then we all take them to, in the fall because we're tired of feeding them and stuff, we're going to cause prices to go lower even even more because you know it's a supply and demand thing. So and again, if I'm going to hold goats for any length of time, I would want to put a pencil to it and see if that's going to make me any money because if we're going in a declining market, holding the goats is going to actually cause us to lose more money uh, when we sell them. So it's kind of better to take the uh, take it, the money you can get now instead of uh, you know putting good money after bad. So. I believe that's all I've got on the goats. Uh, anybody got any questions uh, that they want to uh, ask about the goats market before we jump into the sheep? I'll pull up the, I don't think the chat room, let's see here. Can we call your extension office because all our energy cares about is sowing and food and not livestock. Jessica, uh, yeah. If you need any help, I'm a, I've got an email address. I'm going to put at the end of this. Um, and you can ask us any questions you want. Uh, and and if, if we can't find an educator that can help you close to you, yeah, we'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, so uh, even if you're in another state, uh, well, uh, I've been known to help people out of, in other states as well. So, yes, we can help you out. So seeing no other questions. Oh, I do have one more uh, go. I, uh, I stole this from Texas A&M first, guys. I'm going to give them credit. And uh, you can kind of see, uh, you know, these are the average prices uh, for uh, San Angelo. Uh, the, and they, they put all classes of goat, not, not just looking at number ones. But you can kind of see here where they, we, were, we were trending up pretty good. I mean, the first quarter of 2020 is better than uh, 2020 than it, than it was in, in the – in the 2018 and 2019. And so uh, this was shaping up to be a good year. Uh, we thought it was all going to be pretty good, but you know, it's just the uh, way it goes. We, you know, we didn't really expect this. So got another question here. I've had more people contact me in the last two weeks about wanting to buy goats than I've had in the last two years. I'm only got let's so Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, Jamie, that's, that's a good question that her, her question is kind of about uh, people wanting to buy, uh, buy goats. Uh, one seminar or one webinar I was in, they was asking about if this virus or this situation was going to drive more, even more people that we've already had a really strong movement to, to uh, purchasing local, uh, uh, locally grown, locally, you know, harvested type of foods. And was this going to push people even further towards that? Uh, that's going to be a great uh, research project for somebody, but uh, but yeah, it, it could be uh, this people, you know, wanting to you know go local, not be uh, you know get it from national may actually increase the local demand uh, as well. But I I don't have any really great answers to know if that's going to be a you know good or not. So uh, so let's go. So I'm I'm gonna go into sheep here real quick. Uh, sheep, you can break that down in. Uh, two different groups. What they call them is traditional and non-traditional. Traditional are your, your wool sheep, basically. They're lambs that are weaned and then grown out for another 30 to 40 pounds, depending on what the market is, before they're processed. And then your non-traditional, that's typically your hair sheep. They're basically sold for processing at weaning at that 60 to 80 pound uh, mark. And really the non-traditional goat uh, sheep can be kind of swapped in a little bit uh, for the goat market and, as well. So. Uh, 
but now when we talk about sheep, 50% of the of the traditional uh, market is is restaurants, food service and restaurants uh, are 50% of, of that demand. And I show, told you all ago, 70% of that demand is or more has gone away. And what we have seen is we've seen restaurants actually canceling orders for uh, for lamb that they had for the Easter holiday that's coming up. And this has had a significant effect on the lamb prices and, and the, so the slaughter uh, slaughter lambs and even slaughter uh, uh, the bigger lambs, traditional lambs. So this significant damage to the food service market is going to hurt. And really, Easter is the big market for these uh, for the traditional lambs, and it's coming at right at a bad time. And so they're expecting loss of demand and lower prices from these wool sheep. And when you look at these charts that you pull, I pull up from the LMIC, you can see it's already begun. You know, these, these are slaughter lambs. These are the 60 to 90 pounds. Uh, we're seeing a sharp decrease, uh, not, you know, about, you know, about $15 a hundred weight or you know, 15 cents a pound. Uh, this probably, this would, uh, wasn't updated to the very end of the month. You probably put in this next last, last week. I think prices dropped down even lower, down even closer to $2 a pound for the uh, for these uh, class group. When you look at the slaughter of uh, the, the bigger lambs, it's even a worse story. I mean, they've dropped from about a, a buck uh, 75 to a buck 40. And again, this doesn't have the latest date in it. I think it's even come down even further. But the news, you know, if you looked at the, this graph right here, prices were still above the five-year average for that weight group, but this heavyweight group, this wool sheep, uh, we dropped below 2019 and uh, we're dropped below the five-year average. So it's a little bit concerning. Uh, we're, we're, you know, about for these sheep. And, and I know that if you're a goat person on here, you're going, why do I need to be concerned about this? Uh, I mean, it's not a one-to-one -one effect, but this this kind of a drop is going to affect the, the goat market a, a little bit. Uh, and so especially this weight class right here, because again, these are kind of closely, can be substituted to some degree for goats because they're the same weight, kind of the same weight range. So if these are cheaper, you know, we substitution occurs, goat prices are going to have to come down as well. Uh, the one thing that does concern me about the sheep park market and what they have a habit of doing is they will, if, if the prices are too low, they'll hold on to their products and actually put it into cold storage. And this is what this chart's showing here. And, and anytime cold storage numbers get up, and you see it up last September, about 45 million pounds, that has a real detrimental effect to price. And you think back to you know last year's prices for the uh, for slaughter lambs or slaughter you or uh, sheep <clears throat> market rate sheep that's you know you got to work through that and so if we if sheep producers start putting a lot of this into cold storage or even worse the imported lamb that comes in uh, starts to go into cold storage this is going to have a detrimental effect that's going to last a lot longer into uh, into the season and could be a lot longer lasting effects then the COVID-19, you know, assuming that we get through the COVID-19, maybe, you know, hopefully sometime before the summer months are over. Uh, so this is, that's got me a little bit concerned uh, with that, if they did go about doing that. And again, this is kind of a similar chart to that first one, but I, I stole this from Texas A&M, and it, it does have the new data in it. And you can see that the, the hair sheet uh, this is strictly hair sheep at San Angelo, dropped, you know, from over 250 a pound to just right at two dollars a pound. And this was updated with this uh, as of 25, and again, prices were down again this week, which is 331 uh, sales. So, uh, again, not really good news. And and so, uh, but but again, I, I think I agree with my counterpart in Texas and when I listened to him talk yesterday. If I had hair sheep ready to go, I think I'd go ahead and just take them to market and not hold on to them uh, because I don't know that's going to get uh, any better anytime soon. So I believe that's all I have to do on the sheep. Are there any questions on sheep real quick? I didn't think, I, I just wanted to add that on. So this last little uh, set, section I'm going to talk a little bit about is <clears throat> some, uh, I call them the USDA relief programs and the CARES Act. Now, USDA, I don't know how many of y'all have taken advantage of some of the USDA programs. 
because I know a lot of goat people think that those programs are only meant uh, for cattle or you know, big livestock, and they're not. They are meant for just about any type of livestock, and, and goats have qualified for just about every program that USDA has. Now, the issue that USDA has is, uh, you know, they're not going to go out and, and find you. Uh, and so they need, you know, if you, if your USDA local county office doesn't know that you're there and you have goats, you might want to start letting them know because that way they can know that you have goats, let you know that the programs are available when the sign up dates are and what you need to do uh, to get some of these relief programs uh, and relief monies. And then the CARES Act, that's a new package that was signed by the uh, president just the other day. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means to you and your bottom line. Let's talk about the, the, uh, the USDA first. Here's, and again, I, I, I can't tell you exactly what's gonna happen uh, with this, uh, but I can tell you that USDA has been given $23.5 billion for two different, pro, uh, two different kind of uh, programs. The first program, 14 billion, that's the Commodity Credit Corporation, and, and there's different types of programs that go into that. You know, you have the loan program, price loss coverage, disaster assistance, MFP payments. Livestock does qualify for some of these programs. And when I say livestock, usually that should mean goats. And so they're, you know, they're kind of different rumors, different uh, thoughts and feelings, but we may, as livestock producers, get one of these MFP payments that maybe come up out of this. Again, they have not said uh, when you call the FSA offices, they don't know anything either. They're waiting too. Uh, nothing's been done uh, for these. The, the other part that's been given is nine and a half billion has been given to the Secretary of Ag at his discretion. He can use it however he feels fit. Uh, I did hear uh, yesterday that they thought that the, to use that nine and a half billion, there's going to have to be a a, a a comment period, which is a it has to be 30 days. Uh, so it may not be coming anytime soon, but there's still money out there that may be available to help you with your operation and stuff. And so I want you to be aware of that. And, but again, your USDA office has to know uh, about this. And so if they don't know about you, uh, chances are, you know, you need to probably uh, form that relationship pretty good. I do realize that that means you're going to have to tell them that you're farming or that you're raising goats. And so, you know, it, it, don't worry about Big Brother. It's not about that, but they just they do have to know. So, uh, but what it has been able to do is because of the federal disaster uh, declarations, uh, we're now eligible for emergency loans. But now, but I will tell you, if you're looking at maybe using a loan uh, to kind of help you through this tough time, emergency loan interest rates right now are higher than what their normal operating loans are. And, and they've been told to expedite any loan application. So if you have any uh, eligibility left with FSA, goats are eligible for operating loans. And these interest rates that I'm talking about, they're not, it's not free money, but it's pretty close to free. So uh, we could, you know, there could be some of that available to you. Uh, but now I will tell you this too, because of the COVID-19, all FFA, all FSA, Farm Service Agency offices are closed to the public. You can't just walk up to them. You have to make an appointment. And then even when you make an appointment, you're going to get scanned. And, and you know, if you got a fever, they're not letting you in the door. Uh, and then every office is operating at a minimal staff. For example, my office here in my county, one person is running the whole entire FSA office. And they're doing, you know, all, you know, eight hours a day, uh, one person. So they only one they can only handle one person at a time. So if something program does come along, we're gonna have to be real patient uh, with FSA and, and because they're gonna, you know, until they can get up to where they're working at full staff. So so that's about all I'm gonna talk about on the FSA side of it. Let's talk a little bit about the CARES Act. Uh, Y'all may have already know this, but just in case you don't, all U.S. residents, this, this has nothing to do with livestock, but all U.S. residents with an adjusted gross income, and that's your AGI on your income tax, uh, under 75,000 for an individual or 150,000 for married jointly, are gonna receive what they call, they're calling the recovery rebate. 
what you're going to get is $1,200 per individual. So if you're single, you're going to get 1200 bucks. If you're married and have no children, you're going to get 2400 Children, uh, the rebate amount, 500 bucks for children under 17. Uh, the, the children over, that are over 17, uh, and, and like I have one who's 19, I'm not sure where they're going to fall. It's, it's, it's kind of a, they're going to get in that loose area. And if, and like, for example, my son did not file income taxes for 2018 because he didn't work. And so, and this is all based, but then now this is all based on your 2019 taxes, the taxes that if you, you either you filed or, you know, you have an extra three months to file. But so, but if, but if those kids haven't filed an income tax return yet for 20, you know, for 2019, I'm not sure exactly, you know, what's going to happen. But if, but if they're year dependent and they're under 17, you're going to get 500 bucks for those. So a married couple with, let's say, two children, you're going to get a, 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 a rebate of 3,400 bucks. Again, I told you it's based on 2019. So if you haven't filed 2019, they're going to go back to 2018 and look at that. And y'all don't have to do anything. This is going to be automatic. Uh, they're going to, like I said, if you didn't file your taxes, they're going to, what they're going to do, if you did direct deposit with your taxes, they're going to send that money directly to that account. If that account's no longer valid or open and it gets bounced back, then they're going to, they're not going to cut checks, what I've been told. They're going to then issue uh, debit cards. And so, uh, and I'm, I don't know, have all the particulars on that and that's more coming. So, but you will get it. You don't have to do nothing. And this is a rebate and it's not taxable. So it's just going to be kind of a credit on your 2020 return. And even if you filed it, it, it doesn't matter. You're, and, and you're still going to get it. Uh, now, if you go over those amounts, 75,000 or 150,000, there's still, you still have an a ability to get some money, there's a sliding scale. The more the more you go over, the, the reduces that 1,200 bucks. Uh, but you know, so you, you might want to check with your tax preparer and see what uh, what you're going to get. Or you know, you can contact your uh, county extension office, and we've got people that can answer that question once all the particulars get get outlined in, as well. So <clears throat> to kind of wrap things up, unless somebody's got some, uh, you know, if you got any more questions, you know, ask. But Goat, goat prices, I think, have a little more stability than sheep. Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna say they're gonna hold up, uh, you know, over that, you know, hang up over a two and a half dollar, you know, two dollar, you know, some somewhere, you know, I think maybe the two dollar mark may be the the, the price we shoot for. But what I'm a little concerned about is the economic woes is pressure, you know, gonna pressure those prices. One thing I didn't visit about is imports. Uh, import numbers are slow. Uh, it takes about 90 days to get to hear about them. All I can tell you about is what January's imports for goats were, and they were up from January 2019. So, you know, that could have an effect. And then as other protein sources, chicken, you know, uh, beef gets cheaper, uh, that's going to cause problems as well. Uh, I think the cold storage and sheep could be a problem in the third and fourth quarter. I think, again, I think if I have uh, livestock animals to sell, I think I would sell now and not, and not try to flood that, not hold to hold on to them and flood the market because typically in goats, that's when, uh, you know, in the falls when everything comes to market anyway, that's because of the production schedules. So I think I'd go ahead and, and, and hit the market now. And then I, you know, I think there'll be some form of government programs. I think goat and sheep are gonna be eligible about that. So just pay attention to that as well, so. With that, I'm going to pick this up just in case you ever got any questions. Uh, I, it's not just me. I've got a team of people uh, that help me out on the meat goat education. I've got uh, access to a veterinarian. I got access to nutritionists. And then I got access, you know, of course, to, to economists. If you ever got a question, all you can do is just email this meatgoats at okstate.edu. And uh, we'll get your questions answered as quick as possible. So. With that, I'm going to stop sharing and see. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can unmute everybody. <coughs> Everybody's unmuted, so if you've got a question, awesome. go ahead and ask a question if you want to. Don't everybody speak at once. JJ, what do we do with the kids that we got to sell in May if our cell barns are shut down? 
Now, are your sale barns shut down? I don't. Somebody asked me about sale barns being shut down. I don't think they're going to shut them down. Well, they shut they shut down the one in Mountain View, and that's the main one that I take them to okay. here in Western Oklahoma. I think I would look in. See, if you're going to Mountain View, uh, the Chickasaw Shea Meat Company still that's re where I've been selling. Uh, they haven't changed, and and they they've indicated until the government shuts them down, they're going to keep doing it. But if, okay. if if that's my choice, it, you know, if I don't have an option, uh, you know, I would look for the next closest market, I guess would be my opinion, um, what I would look into doing instead of holding on to them. Because Christy, I think if, if you don't, I think you'll lose more money by holding on to them. You see what I'm saying? I, keep, I keep think so money. too. So, so that's what I would do. Okay. Thank but you. I don't, I, I'm kind of surprised because now it may be the smaller markets are shutting down, but, uh, <clears throat> The, the order buyers still got to fill the orders. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah, I'm kind of shocked that they shut it down, but, but I, I wouldn't think they're going to shut them all down. Okay. I, I just have three that I hadn't sold off Facebook. So <laughs> I, I didn't want to hold them. <laughs> I understand. Thank you. Any more questions? JJ, we have some guys over on Facebook saying their auctions are closed too. Okay. So. Okay. That's, that's that's kind of odd because like I said, I I've been told the livestock guys because they could still practice social distancing, but not allow the the looky loos to come in. Is what I was told they were not going to do. So the looky loos. <laughs> listen to me long enough, Christy, you'll hear a lot of southeastern Oklahoma <laughs> saying. <laughs> They're saying Chickasha won't be selling April fourth. Oh really? They, they may have changed their minds. So they won't be. Now, what was that? That means this Saturday they won't be open? That's what they said. That's what yeah. they said. I, 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 I've tried to call them, but they were open. Like I said, they they were open just, well, the last third, the third um, Saturday in March. And and uh, I asked them, and, but they may have changed their mind since then. So uh, well, I hope it's not permanent. <laughs> oh, no. The, I don't think the guys are going to be permanent. They're uh, best I can tell. Uh, but I'll tell you what I'll do is that I'll do some digging and, and look around and, and, and actually I have to go to the chick Shea meat company unless they're closed doors. Uh, I've got a, a animal to butcher, uh, Monday. And if I find out something, I'll put something per their Facebook page. Okay, Scott. Uh, I'll have to look up there cause their website doesn't indicate anything. Uh, I'll, I'll visit with them, and if I find out some more information from them on Monday, or I'll, I'll post it on our Facebook page as well, uh, the OSU Meat Goat Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, JJ, where is that program for um, uh, the data on your goats? You know, uh, where do I go on the OSU site to find that? It, it should, it, it's called the Kidding Spreadsheet. There should it should have its own tab. When you go to the, the main website, it should it, it's listed on the first page that you can click on it, or on the left hand side there's a tab. It's called the kidding spreadsheet. Okay. You should be able to download it from there. If you okay, have some thanks. problems, you can just email me and I can e I can either send it to you or do something like that if you can't okay. if you're having problems. Thank you. No problem. Are there any other questions? Kept you about 40 minutes, which I was kind of thinking about 45. Well, thank you very much. Well, all right, guys. Well, appreciate everybody showing up. And again, if you got any questions, that new we got that new uh, email address, and so I, I I'll be able to and, and forward it. Instead of everybody sending it to my email box, it still comes to my box, but at least I know it's a goat question now. So. So, I'd, uh, so we'll go from there, but I appreciate everybody showing up tonight. And and uh, if you see anybody wanted to miss this tonight, I'll have this recording posted on our YouTube channel, probably not by tomorrow, by Monday. So. Hey, JJ. I think, I think we're going to have to <clears throat> kind of adjust and uh, accept that this, this Zoom, these kinds of digital interfaces, this is how we're going to get our information. This is all OSU is going to let us do for the foreseeable future right now. So. Yeah, but it's good. It's effective. I'm glad you liked it. So. Hey, yes, thank said, you, JJ. 
they said over on Facebook that if you had 50 plus animals to market, you could make an appointment. So it might be worth calling those auctions if you really need to make something happen. Okay. Okay. 